What is up people and welcome, it's your boy Kage, and we are here to talk about who is the mascot for PlayStation. People seem to be confused on a matter and I do believe it's because a gaming journalist, I mean Game Informer had an interview with Mark Cerny and the journalist asked him was Knack going to be the mascot for PlayStation 4? And I was like, uh, what? And that kind of just goes to show gaming journalists don't know that much about games as much as they should. And I know as of lately, they've kind of been getting bashed for that. Rightfully so. If you're going to be a gaming journalist, you need to know what you're talking about. You need to know how to play games. You need to know about the company. If you can't do that, you're obviously in the wrong business. And it comes from big YouTube channels making top 10 lists of PlayStation mascots and they do it completely wrong. I'm not talking about the guy who's making his personal favorite list. I'm talking about channels that make it as if they're using statistics kind of to judge who is the number one mascot. So I'm here to put the confusion to rest and tell you guys who's the mascot for PlayStation and why. Before we dive into it, let's look at the definition of a mascot to clear up any misconceptions some might have, but mainly to reinforce my points I will go on to make later on in the video. The definition of a mascot is a person or thing that brings good luck or that is used to symbolize a particular event or organization. With that being said, the most important part of this definition is used to symbolize a particular event or organization, but the main thing we want to look at is the symbol and the organization, the symbol being the character and the organization obviously being Sony. Just a heads up, I will not be mentioning every character, so characters like Spike, Sir Daniel, and even Spiral will not be mentioned in this video. And before the Spiral fanboys get triggered and come at me in the comment section, this video is about the main mascot for PlayStation, not the multiple mascots it might have or had. Like Nintendo for example, sure it has Link, Donkey Kong, and Samus, and they all are mascots in their own right, but Mario is definitely the main mascot for Nintendo. Okay, in 1994, Sony released the first PlayStation in Japan. At this time, Sony didn't seem to have any plans for a mascot. In 1995, Sony's Computer Entertainment of America started to get interested in a mascot, and they came up with Polygon Man. I'm sure most of you guys know him from PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. He was featured as the final boss. He appeared in the console's pre-launch ads commenting on various launch games, but he was quickly dropped before the PlayStation launched in the West, because Ken Kutaragi basically hated his guts. Skipping forward to 1996, Crash Bandicoot was released and he was set to be the mascot for the PlayStation. This was even stated by Jason Rubin and I quote, Nintendo has Mario, Sega has Sonic, we're going to make the mascot for Sony. Crash was the mascot for the original PlayStation, and Sony seemed to be 100% behind the idea. Crash was promoting the PlayStation, he was in numerous commercials and ads. For one of the commercials, they had him go to the Nintendo building and taunt Mario, which I found absolutely hilarious. He even got his own weird dance in Japan. With the success of the Crash series and PlayStation being the best-selling console of that generation, Crash seemed to have a bright future ahead of him. On July 22, 1999, a game created by Sony Interactive Entertainment called Doko Demo Ishio hope I said that right. Meeting together anywhere. Sounds kind of like a Japanese dating game if you ask me. This game featured two cats, one named Toro and the other one named Kuro. Toro being the white cat and Kuro being the black cat. And they became the official mascots for Sony Japan. Toro was even given the nickname the Sony Cat, which says a lot. Not to mention that Toro has been on every PlayStation platform. He has guest starred in many games. So yeah, he's the mascot and that's the end of the video, right? Well, it's not that cut and dry. See, the problem with Toro is his target audience is Japan, and most of his games did not get ported to the West. And remember, he was only stated to be the mascot in Japan. So with that, there are two mascots for PlayStation, one for Japan and the other one for the West. So let's go back and find out who's the mascot for the West. Last we mentioned, Crash was doing well, and he had a bright future ahead of him. Well, until Sony acquired the rights to Naughty Dog in 2001. You would think that it would have worked in their favor, and it did as it relates to attaining the company, but for Crash, he was co-owned by Universal, aka Activision. If they want to sever ties with Universal and sell the company to Sony, they would have to let go of Crash. Of course that happened, and Crash had to take the same walk as Sonic the Hedgehog, getting crappy games and appearing on the same platform as his former rival. After the fall of Crash, Naughty Dog made a new character to fill that void that Crash left, which was Jack and Dexter. But it wouldn't be so easy just to replace a character like Crash. Not just that, other characters started appearing like Ratchet and Clank and Sly Cooper with the potential of being Sony's next mascot. Then in 2015, the original God of War was released and Kratos was born. He went against everything people thought a mascot would be. He wasn't a cute character like 90% of the mascots. He was brutal, ruthless, violent, and he didn't have the characteristics of a hero. Some went as far as to calling him a villain. But that wouldn't disqualify Kratos from being a mascot at all. Kratos' popularity easily rose above the rest, but he wasn't fully acknowledged until the PlayStation 3 generation where he started to make many appearances in other games. Not to mention he's been on every platform since his debut on the PlayStation 2. 
Now let me put a rest to this Nathan Drake being a mascot of PlayStation 3. The reason it doesn't make sense to say that Drake is a mascot for PlayStation 3, Chris was used way more as a symbol of exclusivity. For an example, Soul Calibur for Broken Destiny, it was exclusive for the PSP. He was in Mortal Kombat 9 as an exclusive character for PlayStation 3. He was in Hot Shot, Golf 5, Destiny of Spirit, Modern Nation Racer, even though Nathan Drake was in that too, Tearaway, and Shovel Knight. And if that's not enough for you in the crossover brawler PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, they have Kratos standing in the center while everyone else stands around him. And this isn't done by accident, this is done on purpose because Kratos has been there for a long time and he's been promoting Sony for a long time. So there you have it, Sony has two main mascots, Total being for Japan and Kratos being for the West. This makes sense, Total is a character that's heavily based in Japanese culture and Kratos is based on Greek and now Norse mythology. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and now you know who's the main mascots of PlayStation. And if you're new already and you watch the video anyway, thanks for tuning in. I was thinking about making a Kratos vs. Toto video and not an actual battle on who's the better mascot. If you guys want to see that, comment down below and let me know. But for now, that's it for my video. Don't forget to power by hitting the like button, subscribe to join the guild, and as always, my boys and girls, have a good one and game over.